Today's book is The Case of Sensational Stims, written by Aaron Garcia, illustrated by Christian Bayes, and read by Aaron Garcia and Christian Bayes. Welcome everyone, we're so glad you're here. My name is Aaron Garcia and I am the author of The Case of Sensational Stims. I'm Christian Bayes and I am the illustrator of the book. So let's just jump right in, shall we? Let's do it. I'm going to read the part of Elise, and Christian is reading the part of the main character, Joey. So here we go. This book is dedicated to our neurodiverse friends and their allies who seek to understand and support them, and in honor of those who were or are currently harmed because of their sensory needs. We love you and are creating a more educated and empathetic world. Hi, my name is Joey. I'm seven and I love to play. I'm going to be an animal expert. I'm also autistic, which is awesome. This means I experience the world in a unique way. My senses are extra sensitive. I notice many details that others might not. That's one of the coolest things about autism. These details I notice are called sensory input. They make me feel many strong emotions and stimming helps me release them. Stimming is when I use my body instead of my words to express my feelings. If I try to stop my stims from happening, I can experience sensory overload. This is when all my feelings get trapped inside, and I feel like I'll burst. My body just knows when I need to stim. Loud noises hurt my whole body, not just my ears. When noise is really bothering me, I usually flap my hands. But I also flap my hands when I'm happy. Stims can look similar, but mean different things. Stimming makes me feel happy and safe. This is different from my sister Elise. When she's concentrating, she twirls her hair, but stops when she wants. She manages her feelings differently. That's just the way she is. I don't need to twirl my hair when I focus. Anyway, hippopotamuses are my passion. I love them. I'm writing hip effects, then playing with the leaves. We have so much fun. Mom bought me a hippo book and a new lamb to read it by. I'm all set. Joey, I need your help. I can't solve this puzzle, and you're so good at them. Wait, why is Joey doing an upset stim? What's that annoying noise? My body hurts from that sound. Flapping my hands is helping. I can't concentrate. It's so loud. I need help, but I can't seem to explain what I need to do today. Learn hip effects. Play with Elise. Joey's upset. He has his hippo book and a new light. He should be happy. This is a mystery. To help my brother, I must use my senses, like my eyes and my ears, but most of all, my heart. Even though he's upset, Joey is safe. I can help him while mom cooks dinner. But why is he upset? I'm on the case. Why isn't Joey reading his new book? Hippos are his favorite. He likes them even more than blue iguanas, even more than pangolins, even more than ring-tailed lemurs. It's almost dinner. I need another clue to solve this case. He's flapping his hands. That happens when there's a lot of noise. That sound! I feel awful. I can't explain it. I don't want to disappoint Elise. And I want to finish my hippo facts. I am overwhelmed. Hmm. Joey has moved away from his book and new light. Oh my. The lamp is buzzing. I didn't hear it at first, but now it's bugging me too. Let's turn it off. There. The buzzing is gone. You couldn't hear that? It's explosive! Hmm. Why would it be buzzing? Wait! Mom's using the microwave. In science, we learn that when certain lights are on at the same time as an appliance, a buzzing can happen. It's called electromagnetic interference. Let's take a break. Use this quiet lamp to write your facts. Do you feel a little better? 
What is it, Joey? Do I see a flappy stem of joy? Yes! I'm so glad that the noise is gone and I took a break. I feel great! I was able to finish writing and make you a surprise. I know you like when I help you, but puzzle pieces aren't for me. I hope you're not mad, but here's what I made instead. A Pegasus? I love it! I knew you would. They're on all your toys, books, and drawings. We could share this Pegasus. With your puzzle pieces, it belongs to both of us. Even though we are different, we can always help each other. Now, now let's, let's go, go play. play! Thank you so much for reading this book with us and, and listening to our important story. Thank you. Christian and I made this story because we think it's really important that everyone knows what stimming is. There's a lot of different ways that people can stim, and for some people, it's more important than others. I like to stim by, um, I tap my foot a lot. Christian, do you ever stim? I do stim. Um, sometimes I just kind of fiddle around with my fingers um, off to the side. Yeah. Um, it helps me concentrate and stay calm when I'm a little nervous. Yeah. I, I do all kinds of stimming. Sometimes I love to chew on things, especially when I'm feeling anxious. So sometimes stimming tells us how we're feeling like emotionally. And in the back of the book, if you guys have it, there's a page about uh, explanations on different parts of the book and also discovering your feelings. And so when we know how we're feeling, it might also explain why we're stimming. So sometimes we stim to kind of work through emotions and sometimes we stim to work through sensory input, like loud noises or bright lights or really cold weather or really hot weather. Um, so it's a lot of different reasons for why people stim. I'm curious if you ever stim, people listening, what are the ways that you stim and when do you stim and why do you stim? And you know, you can stim for happy reasons too. Um, I, my little boy likes to flap his hands when he's really happy, or sometimes he squeals with glee. Or have you ever been like super excited when you hear something and you kind of make your hands go like that? Um, so I want to know if you guys ever stim. And I also want you to think about why is it so important for people to know what stimming is? Why might that be a big deal for certain people? Yeah, and, and why might stimming be helpful to you or your peers? So sometimes people stim in ways that maybe you're more comfortable with, and sometimes people stim in ways that you might not have ever seen before. Like some people need to rock back and forth to comfort themselves, or sometimes they might make unusual noises that you're not expecting. And so if we know why people stim, um, how can we help our peers who need to stim in unexpected ways? How can we help them feel more comfortable or maybe feel more accepted? Do you have any ideas? Thank you so much for joining us. We had so much fun and find us on Instagram and Facebook at Sensational Stims.